so we have another takeover story coming out and this is one of many takeover stories that have come out in the last week it was very quiet now man united back from tour the takeover news seems to be heating up and it was said by neil curtis of the sun and he is one of the better journalists for the sun and i know you hear the sun and you know you get skeptical but you know it's one of the better sources he said manchester united are convinced they will get a deal done by november to sell the clubs to the qataris so he's saying deal done by november to sell the club to the Qataris. Now, a deal could be agreed in, in principle in September, but it would maybe not be finalised till November. Um, and it was also said that discussions are understood to have taken place, um, sorry, discussions are understood to have taken a big leap forward in recent weeks with a six billion sale now close. Qatar Sheikh Yassim's team have been doing due diligence ahead of a final formal offer. So Neil Curtis of the Sun is saying a done deal between Qataris and United will be done in November. And that apparently it's taken a massive leap and a deal will be done around then six billion kind of hinting that private conversations have gone on between the qataris and the glazers and that it could be done now i'm just going to say this i don't think that this is a bad journalist and i don't think he's a bad source of information but i still am with the stance that no one really knows what's going on with the takeover and people are just putting things out for clicks and views again this is exciting I could get all giddy. Oh my God, the takeover is going to be done in November. Qatar have taken a huge leap forward. Done deal, done deal, done deal. I could sit here really, really giddy. But how many times have we had stories like this and it not been true? And even though this isn't like, even though this doesn't come from like just some random made up ITK account. And, you know, he has been right about Man United news in the past. It's like we've been told from numerous sources, even reliable sources. Oh, you're going to find out something here. You're going to find out something there. We don't. So I wouldn't get too giddy over this. I think there's a lot of news coming out, a lot of news indicating towards Qatar. Qatar's camp and people I know that have actually got sources in the Qatari space are saying they're very confident. I think it's going Qatar's way. I'm still confident it's going Qatar's way. But what I'm not confident about is when they say you're going to find out something next week, it's going to be done by them. It's going to be done by them because it was going to be done by the end of March. Then it was going to be done before the end of the season. Then it was going to be done in June. Then it was going to be done in July. You know, now it's going to be done in, in the coming days. Now it's going to be done by November. It's positive news. Apparently, you know, Sheikh Yassim's taking a leap forward. The deal's going to be done with Sheikh Yassim and Qatar. Brilliant. Positive news. We'll cover the takeover news. But I think, I just think with the NDAs, I think no one really knows what's going on. I think a lot of false information out there. And I wouldn't expect uh, Neil Curtis, no disrespect, to be the guy to break this story. If Mike Keegan comes out later tonight or tomorrow morning and says, look, guys, Qatar... They're in the lead, or David Ornstein, or Fabrizio Romano. I start to get a bit giddy. I start to get a little bit giddy. But it, it's a positive sign. But I would, we just, we've been told this too many times before for me to get excited. Me six months ago would have got really excited by this. Me now, I'm used to being let down. Now, I literally recorded a whole nine minute video, and then this news came out, and I was like, well, I might as well quickly before I publish the video at this end. So I'm going to stop the Qatar section news of the video and we're just going to transition it into the nine minute video I literally filmed on Hoyland, the lens preview and more now. But let me know your thoughts on the takeover and smash a like. Rasmus Hoyland is officially a Manchester United player. For Britsa Roman is confirmed, all the paperwork has been signed. It is official, he's completed his medical. His first day at Man United was today where he was spotted doing a photo shoot and walking around Carrington, but Manchester United are holding off his announcement until tomorrow at the stadium versus the RC Lens game. We'll speak about Hoyland, the deal, his first game and a little bit more. He's probably expected to play in the Dublin game, obviously not the RC Lens game, as he obviously will be announced. United got to make the most for the media clicks, views, you know the thing. But we're also going to be previewing the RC Lens game in today's video talking about the lineup to expect in that game than the lineup to expect in the Bilbao game but before we get into that obviously there's news about Bayern Munich hijacking Amrabat there's also news about Manchester United getting two new offers for Eric Bay, an offer for Alvaro Fernandez, an offer for Donny van der Beek United getting two new nice offers coming in for players the sales starting to kick in we know that United they've brought players but we know they equally need to sell players so let's dive right into the news let's start with the Hoyland story and then we'll get into the rest so as you can see on the screen the mail have got pictures of Rasmus Hoyland who was pictured in Manchester leaving a photo shoot today it is currently unclear who had organized the shoot but the step is likely to be the final obstacle before Hoyland's grand announcement this weekend 
If you didn't know, we have signed Hoyland. It is official. All the paperwork has been signed. He's been spotted doing a photo shoot at Manchester United. He's been spotted in Manchester. We know he's a player. We're just waiting for the unveiling. And then I think the photos will come out of Rasmus Hoyland tomorrow. Very, very exciting times. A great young striker. And I'm going to say this before I get into the rest of the news. I really hope every United fan is incredibly patient with Rasmus Hoyland. He's coming in for the future. He's not Harry Kane. He's a great, young, exciting player. Six foot three, rapid, great talent. Uh, really good at dribbling, really good at progressing the ball, really good at linking up the ball, good creativity. Obviously presses a lot what Ten Hag wants. He's a young striker that suits Ten Hag's system. PSG wanted Hoyland, then they went for Ramos because he chose United. He rejected a lot of clubs for United. This is a fantastic signing. And his announcement tomorrow, it's not quite Varane or Casemiro, who we previously announced at the stadium, but it's still exciting times. But I want to get into the rest of the transfer news. We know Hoyland's done. We know he'll be announced tomorrow, and that is great. But there is a few stories about Man United losing out on Amrabat, and then obviously we've got offers for Bailly and other players coming in as well. So the story on Amrabat said this. Justin, Amrabat's management are monitoring Bayern's situation as they know that Tuchel is looking for a holding midfielder. Now, I wouldn't be too worried. Uh, Mason Mount, Arsenal, Liverpool expressed interest in him. He went to Manchester United. Anana, Chelsea and other clubs expressed interest in him. He went to Manchester United. Rasmus Hoyland, PSG were like apparently in for Hoyland, offering higher wages. He went to Manchester United. Fabrizio Romano Romana has said that Amrabat has said yes to United. He's really keen on the idea of going to United. He dreams of going to United and working with Ten Hag again. He's already rejected uh, big deals from Saudi Arabia. He is focused on United. He wants United. His brother said his dream is to play in England. He wants to work with Ten Hag again. Fabrizio Romano has confirmed. He has said yes. He's turned down deals from Saudi Arabia, just like our other signings, who seem to have turned down deals to go to United. Amrabat wants United. Ten Hag has pulled, and that is fantastic. This time a year ago, it was a lot more difficult for United to sign players, having finished sixth, having our worst season ever, losing the first few games of the season. But everyone can see that Ten Hag's put the spirit back in United. The squad looks great. There's happiness. The morale's there. The mentality's right. They're playing nice. It's football. They're improving. It's a young project that's building. They're back in the Champions League. Everyone believes in the project. It's only going to get better. And obviously, that's why we're attracting players like Kanana. And um, Rio Ferdinand made a good point about the Inns as well. And I really agree with Rio here. He said... I'm very happy with the chance of the window. They were very decisive. They had their targets and got them quickly. There hasn't been a saga um, like in the recent years. They quickly understood that they wouldn't get Harry Kane and it was not going to be a long saga. I like that approach. And I have to say, in terms of ins, United have gone with the right approach. If you couldn't get Kane, who do you want to knock Hoyland? Get Hoyland done before the start of the season. We need a striker before the start of the season. You don't want to keep De Gea. We've given him a new contract. No, let's not give De Gea a new contract. You want Anana. Who's your priority? Mason Mount. Okay, we've got Mason Mount. Look, we're going to have to sell to buy Amrabat, but Amrabat will be in soon. They've got United's 10 Hogs targets. They've got them in quick. United's process on ins has been brilliant. The process on outs has been shambles. Maguire should have been sold and Kim and Jay should have been signed. Um, and I've been saying now I'd keep Maguire. And people were going mad at me like, why would you keep Maguire? Because I would have sold him for Kim and Jay. But that can't happen now. And then Ten Hag wanted Disassi. He's gone to Chelsea. Didn't want Tobedo. He's gone. Julian Timber's gone. If we sell Maguire, the best we're going to get is Pavard. And to be honest, I would sell Maguire for Pavard. But that means we won't get a centre-back the following summer. If we keep Maguire this season to be a fifth-choice centre-back, fifth-choice centre-back, um, and then next summer we have the funds to get an Antonio Silva or 70, 80 million centre-back, I'd just wait a year and get a proper centre-back next year if there's not a player that Ten Hag really wants to replace him with. But Maguire should have been sold. Kim and Jay should have come in. Dean Henderson should have been gone. McTominay, I don't know why we're selling Fred and not McTominay. <clears throat> we could get 35, 40 million for McTominay, um, you know, and he's just going to be a bit part player on the bench. It's clear that Mayno and Amrabat will play over him, so he might not even be worth 20 million a year. I think we should be selling McTominay. I would have kept Fred or Donny. I would have sold McTominay first just because he's worth the most value. West Ham agreeing a deal with Edson Alvarez. I'm not sure what's going on with McTominay, but <clears throat> Manchester United do have two new offers for players. So, first of all, it was said. Um, Eric Bailly receives two offers from the Saudi Pro Leagues. According to Sky Sports, the Ivory Coast International has two offers from clubs in the Saudi Pro League. So two new offers Man United have received for Eric Bailly. That is absolutely fantastic. I don't know why my voice has gone all croaky. <clears throat> Stop croaking. Is that better? So Man United have received two new offers for Eric Bailly. It's also been said by Sky Sport that Burnley want to sign Alvaro Fernandez. And I think that would be brilliant. Getting Alvaro Fernandez a Premier League loan 
fantastic now i don't know if this is permanent or this is a loan deal if it's permanent we've got to put a buyback clause in there because i think alvaro fernandez is a fantastic young fullback and he you could even argue that he could challenge melassia next season but if alvaro fernandez could go on loan to burnley that would be absolutely brilliant to get that experience in really push melassia next season hannibal mesh be set to go on loan to luton town the fact that we're going to have premier players on loan in the premier league would be brilliant mesh be on loan to luton um alvaro on loan to of course Burnley, if we could get Palistri maybe a Premier League loan, that would be absolutely fantastic, or at least give Palistri the minutes, that would be brilliant. I like the idea of seeing our players get Premier League loans. Now, another player we've got an offer for is Donny van der Beek. It was said on Donny van der Beek. Just in, Real Sociedad have approached Manchester United today for Donny van der Beek. The clubs are now discussing the formal terms of the deal. It would depend on the uh, conditions decided by United. So. It's looking like Donny will leave. Donny's very close to leaving. Fred apparently will hundred percent leave, and then Amrabat will be done. But I think we need to speed out the speed out the outs. But Eric Bailly, two new offers. Man United have got for Eric Bailly. Donny van der getting offers. Fred's getting offers, and of course Alvaro Fernandez getting a good loan offer. Uh, Hannibal Mesh be getting a good loan offer. Things are looking up for Manchester United, and the Hoyland announcement is tomorrow. But I want to talk about the RC Lens game. I want to talk about. The Bill Bow and RC Lens game is going to be a, a double preview because I think Man United are going to put two lineups over the next uh, few days. Now, I don't know if they're going to do the strong lineup versus RC Lens and actually just start Hoyland with the strongest 11, or um, not Hoyland, so they're going to do the strong lineup with, uh, against RC Lens, or they'll do the strong lineup in Dublin and maybe start Hoyland with the strongest 11. Hoyland might not even feature in any of these friendlies because he's new and he's not had much time training with the squad, but I'm going to say. We're going to put out two lineups, okay? Lineup one will be Anana. I'm going to say Delo, Martinez, Varane, Luke Shaw, Casemiro, Bruno, Mount, Sancho, Force 9, Rashford on the left, Anthony on the right. That will be lineup one, and I think that could be tomorrow versus RC Lens, but that could be lineup two versus Bill Bow, and potentially Hoyland could be in that. But lineup two, I'm going to say, is going to be Tom Heaton, Wan Bissaka, Molassi if he's fit, if not Alvaro Fernandez, of course, Lindelof, Maguire. I think McTominay will play. I think even though Don, I don't know if Donny will move because he's so close to move. I think McTominay will play. Mejbri will probably play, actually, not Donny, because I think Donny's that close to a move. And, of course, Ericsson will play. And then I think the front three will be Police Street Garnacho, potentially Rasmus Hoyland. Um, or we saw Rasmus Hoyland and Sancho over uh, because I think Rasmus Hoyland would play the second game, not the RC Lens game. But they're two lineups that I think United could put up in the next two days for these friendlies. These are the last friendlies before the start of the season. And... I don't think pre-season's been the best it could have gone for United, so I really hope that we get off on the right foot with these friendlies. And pre-season isn't a be one end all. We had fantastic pre-seasons under Van Howe, and then we had shocking seasons. We had a good pre-season under Oli, and then I think we had a shocking season. So pre-seasons isn't too telling, but I like that at least Anana and Mount have had a pre-season. I hope that Hoyden gets a game under his feet on pre-season without the pressure for United as well and also fingers crossed no more injuries so this video was a bit of a random video which i just wanted to cover loads of bits it was a late night news video we're just covering everything talking about the game tomorrow talking about offers we've got for players talking about hoyland talking about random stuff i thought it's just a bit of a random late night video but i will be back tomorrow with a watch along for manchester united versus rc lens so make sure you subscribe for that thank you for watching and bye